Hey, I'm Fight the Flat Earth, and welcome back to the channel that breaks stupidity's kneecaps first so it can't escape, and I can take my time. At this point, we all know Flat Earthers are the biggest idiots on the planet, because if they aren't, then they're the biggest liars on the planet. Jism knows the Earth is curve. He proved it. Bob Nadell knows the Earth spins. He proved it. There's been so much irrefutable evidence that shows the Earth to be a sphere, so the people still clinging on to this joke of a movement are being shown for the people they really are. And that's people that are dependent on the flat earth, whether to line their pockets or to make them feel special. So today I'm joined by Schrodinger's cat to tackle a flurf who seems as big a con man as he is an idiot. This is episode 12 of Flurfs Are Idiots, The Morgyle. We're living on a disc floating through space with a tiny sun. <laughs> So, what has this particular moron got for us? Well, he thinks rivers disprove the globe. Let's all point and laugh. What up, everybody? John the Morgyle here. Going to do a uh, Flat Earth video for you. Hope you enjoy it. As we yes, John the Morgyle. I'm sure we will enjoy watching you be a complete and utter moron. I predict you won't say a single relevant thing, but act like you're making some massive revelation. As we all well know, uh, water is the most abundant resource upon the world, uh, constituting over two-thirds of the world's known surface. Uh, standing water is the best natural level, which will always find equilibrium by filling its given container evenly and level upon the surface. Uh, well, yes, you're right. Water is level on Earth, and that means perpendicular to gravity. Not the same thing as flat like you're implying. And the thing about water is, like everything else, it conforms to forces acting on it. Uh, any topography beneath the level surface of the water will never affect the shape of the water surface, and the surface will always remain perfectly level so long as the body of water is at rest and at equilibrium. Wait, wait, hold on. Are you trying to say that we think water would conform to the shape that's underneath it? Because no one thinks that. This is a typical flurf tactic. Misunderstand physics and then go, ha, see, that doesn't work. When no one ever suggested that your misunderstanding is correct. Now, should that container full of water be breached, allowing the water to flow into some other container, uh, the body of fluid will flow yet again uh, to spread evenly across the bottom of that second container, finding a point of equilibrium exhibiting yet again a level surface once it is at rest. Well, you've just given an excellent example of how gravity acts on water there. Well done. Flowing waters do not exhibit the same uh, traits as standing water at equilibrium. So like rivers all have one thing in common, uh, they begin flowing from a genesis point that is some degree higher in elevation than the place where the flowing water eventually ends up. Usually so rivers flow downhill. Got it. Again, you know, thanks to gravity. The natural process described as fluid dynamics allows large amounts of water to naturally flow from inland higher elevations, springs or aquifers, uh, then responding to the natural law of what goes up must come down. Uh, since the water. Wow, your knowledge of fluid dynamics astounds me. I learn something new every time I watch a flurf video. Usually the thing I learn is that the flurf is a fucking idiot thing. And the law of what goes up must come down. Really, are you five years old? Wait, no, sorry, my five-year-old daughter isn't that stupid. What goes up must come down. You do know why you're an absolute retard, right? Gravity, you fucking retard! Gravity! Have you ever heard of fucking gravity? Gravity! Gravity! Uh, since the water is of a higher density than the air. Oh, you're one of those morons that thinks density replaces gravity. Well, tell me this fuck nugget. What happened to your magic density here? And as soon as we hit zero, as soon as we go into microgravity, well, you'll see. Zero. Yes, I am. Uh, 
um, flowing waters are simultaneously pulled from the lower point or the end point to flow from higher elevations down to lower elevations. Um, open waters simply do not flow uphill, but will always begin at a higher elevation flowing down to a relatively lower elevation. No, you're just repeating yourself. Of course water flows downhill. Get to your point already. Um, if the Earth were a sphere, how exactly would fluid dynamics allow for such a natural phenomenon as rivers flowing down to the sea? Because of gravity. This is one of my biggest problems with you window lickers. You actually have zero clue about the thing that you're trying to disprove. All your questions here can be answered with the law of gravitational attraction, fg equals gm1m2 over r squared. And if you actually applied yourself and studied this really simple equation, maybe you'd understand what you're talking about. What am I saying? A flurf's never going to understand anything, ever. We're told that since the Earth is a sphere, any observer will be at the hypothetical top of that sphere according to their vantage point, and only according to their vantage point, as everyone else in all directions will progressively become lower and lower proportionally with distance on that sphere Earth. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's how a sphere works, but it's not really at the top. More that you're being pulled towards the center no matter where you are. There is no top or bottom of the sphere of our Earth. North does not mean up, and south does not mean down. Of course, each of those observers will believe they themselves to be on the top of the ball, and the theory of gravity is always pulling everything directly towards the center of the Earth, and because of this, every observer is allowed to experience themselves as upon the top of the ball. This is a major problem for the ball Earth theory. And there you go again. No, it's not a problem for us. It is explained by that formula I gave you earlier. Fluid dynamics will not allow flowing water to operate under such conditions. Under what conditions? Reality. Sorry, but your stupidness does not mean things stop working. Let's look at it this way. If we imagine the low point or the end point where the river empties into, say the ocean, uh, from that point, the origin point of the river is necessarily lower in altitude relative to the end point at the top of the ball. No, you moron. Altitude is a measure of distance above sea level. Remember, like you said, everything is always at the top. So by your own logic, everything will always flow downhill. And that diagram you've shown has more water on it than would be on our entire planet. So how is it possible for water comprising the flowing river to flow uphill? The globe earther will claim that elevation is merely relative to the mean curve of the earth, yet no evidence can be provided to support the claim that the earth actually has any curvature, and actually all evidence proves that the earth has no curvature. So... Really? So gravity provides a sort of get-out-of-logic-free card to the ball Earth supporter. Gravity around the ball is a equalizing force which magically allows the ball Earth to behave as if it is actually a planar surface. Magic! Didn't you hear? The magic wand got snapped. Just ask the frontrunner for dumb fuck of the year 2019 Sleeping Warrior. It's not magic, it's mass warping space-time. Um, for one thing, this is amazing and amusing at once. For when have we ever seen an inanimate spherical object to present itself deceptively as a plane? Uh, how many inanimate objects in nature are so very wily and deliberately misleading as the ball Earth? No, it's not misleading, you freak of nature. It's just massive. You've never come across anything as massive as Earth because you've never been off of it. Don't act so incredulous just because you lack the comprehension necessary. In order for rivers to flow down to the ocean on this ball, um, certain conditions must be present, and, and frankly, a hypothetical ball, Earth, does not meet those conditions. Uh, if the genesis point of a given river is considered as the base reference point on a ball, Earth, 
then the observable phenomenon of a flowing river makes some degree of logical sense as the genesis point is higher than all other points. Um, on the other hand, if you consider the midpoint or, or the end point of the river as the base reference frame, then the ball earth theory falls apart as it does not physically allow for rivers flowing to the sea from a relatively higher point. How can you explain and almost understand about being on the top, but then instantly misunderstand it in the next few minutes? This honestly baffles me. In the case where we consider the halfway point of the river as the base reference frame or the top of the world, then the water coming from the Genesis point must flow uphill to reach that midway point, defying rule numero uno of the fluid dynamics, which dictates again that water will never flow uphill. Oh no, he said uh, number one in a different language. He must be super smart. Attack. At the end of the day, if the world were actually a ball, there would just be plenty of evidence to support things like geological curvature, uh, as well as the mind-boggling motion, rotation, and orbit of the Earth, yet no such evidence exists for either. Well, I've already shown you evidence of curvature, but for evidence of rotation, see this video where Bob Nadell explains it nicely. Man, this guy is on the left of the Dunning-Kruger chart and right at the top. I think this amount of stupid needs some backup. Luckily, I know an ex-military cat in a state of quantum superposition, and he's going to take on the Morgyle right after this. I want to say a massive thank you to all my patrons. Your support allows me time to focus on my channel and do what's important, bringing you great content and fighting the flat earth. I want to say an extra massive thank you to my $200 patrons, Christopher Kane and Jeffrey Sloan. If you'd like to join and become part of the FTFE team, go to patreon.com forward slash FTFE. And thank you. There's a very real problem, folks. People who don't accept reality can often not support themselves. The Morgau is one such person. When not in jail, he has trouble making ends meet. Pride goes before the fall. The original quote from the King James Bible, Proverbs 1618 through 1619, uh, pride goes before the destruction and an haughty spirit before a fall. Better it is to be of an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Hey everyone, John the Morgyle here, uh, reaching out to the community in yet another time of crisis. Um, this video will undoubtedly provide ammunition for the trolls and backbiters and those who curse and hate me. I hold no illusions about that. Um, as Christians, we're taught to expect tribulations in our lives, although I never expected to experience a seemingly endless barrage of physically and emotionally draining trials of faith and of spirit, which have run me through the proverbial ringer. I found another applicable piece of scripture. Bettereth for an able-bodied man to get a fucking job rather than e-begging. The economy is goodeth, and jobs are plenteth. This is from the book of Schrodinger. Let's take a quick look at the U.S. unemployment rate. The leads position us as an insignificant speck of dust in the infinitely expanding universe theory, which is indeed the root cause of atheism, nihilism, and all sorts of psychological problems uh, with... Uh, simply being completely absorbed in a fictitious version of reality. Who said that there's an infinite universe? And how would that lead to atheism or nihilism or psychiatric problems? As far as I'm aware, psychiatric problems are not dependent on the shape of the earth. 
actually appear to be the most prominent figures within that movement. Uh, an example in, in the history past would be Gloria Steinem, who created Miss Magazine during the Women's uh, Liberation Movement, although uh, Miss Steinem is an admitted CIA asset and was operating as such for the duration of Miss Magazine, which was heavily influential on young women during the Women's Liberation Movement. Now, not to get off on the tangent of women's rights, but the government had a 50 or 100 year plan to break up the family unit itself. Uh, and this was a long term. Well, was it 50 or 100 year plan? You know what? I'm an amateur at this. Craig, can you help me out? Thanks for that, Cat. Make sure you guys sub to him as he is working hard to fight the flat earth. Next is a quick video the Morgyle did. And I'm showing this to you because. I want to point out the paranoia these conspiracy people live in. Wow. So I just put up my uh, promotional video for my book and I got two phone calls uh, from this number. And I'm going to show you here on my caller ID if it'll show up here. Uh, but I got one call, my wife answered and they hung up. And then a few minutes later, I got another call and they said, and I'll, I'll mock the voice. They said, we do not approve of the book click and the number here that's my caller ID that's backwards it's uh 202-358-0001 and so I uh I did a reverse or I checked you know looked online for the number and it's a NASA affiliated number so I'd really like to know within five minutes of posting this video, uh, you know, promoting my book, why is NASA calling me telling me they don't approve of it? Well, guess what, NASA? I don't approve of your fucking lies. I don't approve of you uh, ripping off $20 billion a year from taxpayers. What are you going to do to me? Are you going to kill me if I do this book? I don't care. We're all going to die someday. I don't care if you kill me or threaten me. I'm going to do the book. Okay, so quit calling. Okay, I don't approve of NASA's lies and raping people for $20 billion a year just in tax dollars. It's not going to stop me. Fuckers. Right, the Morgyle. Let me get this straight for you. NASA don't give two fucks what you do because they know we live on a globe and are busy advancing human knowledge. But as for that $20 billion thing, I think we need to go to the remedial classroom. <laughs> Okay, everyone, settle down today at some basic maths. Yes, Mr. Riley, sorry, Riley, what is it this time? Everyone's being mean to you in your comments section. Well, that's because every video upload makes people want to either laugh at you or punch you. But don't be sad. The good news is you're probably finally going to get that dumb fuck of the year award. You're trying really hard, and rightly so after two second places in a row. So today we're going to look at NASA's budget compared to the US budget. In 2018, the US federal budget was $4.094 trillion. NASA's budget for 2018 was $19.1 billion. That is 0.464% of the federal budget, and it was reduced by 1% from the year before. So that was very basic class. Do you understand? Yes, Mr. Riley? N no, there is no independent variable in NASA's budget. What do you mean, then, how can I prove it? Oh, please go home. Yeah, I know it's not home time yet, but you're too stupid and there's no hope for you. And that's all we have time for today. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up, subscribe and get the notification bell on so you never miss anything from FTFE. Also share this video on the Twitters, Facebooks and even MySpace. Every little helps. And remember, stupidity is not a right. Fight the flat earth. Fight the flat. Fight the flat. Fight the flat. Fight the fight the fight the flat.